Calculus Unit 6, Day 53 Notes, our objective, problems of rectilinear motion will be reviewed and integration through numerical, graphical, and analytical methods will be incorporated into these problems to find the total distance an object travels over a period of time. Uh, just to be clear, rectilinear just means moving in a straight line. So uh, that's all we're going to be dealing with here. Okay. So on these notes, we're looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus, particle motion, and average value. So first thing, three things to keep in mind. The first thing, the integral of v of t, which is velocity, dt, from a to b is equal to p of b minus p of a. Again, where v of t represents the velocity, p of t represents the position. Um, now, number two, the integral of v of t dt from A to B equals the net distance the particle travels on the interval from A to B as long as the velocity is always greater than zero, always positive on that interval A to B. So as long as I'm, my velocity is not negative, it's, it's always positive, then whatever that uh, is going to be, it's going to be the net distance. So if I start at 3 and I go to 27, I'm going to end up being 24. That's my net distance, where if I go uh, three and my velocity is positive, but then I go negative the other direction, then it wouldn't be the net distance. But on number three, the integral of the absolute value of v of t dt from a to b is the total distance that the particle travels on the interval. It doesn't matter if velocity is positive. And again, to be safe, always do this integral when asked to find the total distance when given velocity. So if you're not sure, um, you know, you could do this and you know total distance when you have the velocity. Okay, so let's look at number example number one. Um, so we have the velocity of a particle that is moving along the x-axis is given by the function v of t equals 3t squared plus 6. So if the position of the particle at time equals 4 is 72, what is the position when t equals 2? Okay, well, let's look at what we started with on number one. Up above, three things to keep in mind. So I know that integral of the velocity function is equal to the difference of the two positions, the ending position of the, of the uh, function and the beginning part. Well, they tell us what the ending one is, but we're trying to find the beginning one. So let's set this one up. And let me pause this real quick. Okay, and here's what I have. There's the integral of the velocity function over 2 to 4 is equal to the position value at the ending part, 4, which we eventually know is going to be 72, minus the beginning part. Okay, so let's substitute in what I have. And first let's do, hey, what's the integral of any derivative of this? So raise the power to 1, and then divide, so it'll be t to the third, and then divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and this will be plus 6t. I need to evaluate that from 2 to 4. P of 4 we were given up here is 72, and then I'm trying to find when time equals 2. So once I put those values in, I'll only have my one unknown. Okay, so let's go and let's do that. What I've done is I've just substituted in, so it's the value of the antiderivative at the upper limit minus the value of the antiderivative at the lower limit. And 4 cubed is 64 plus 24 is 88. 8 plus 12 is 20. And now this becomes an algebra problem. Um, 88 minus 20 is 68. And um, 72 minus P of 2, subtract 72 from each side. So I get negative 4 equals negative P of 2. So therefore, the value of the position function when time is 2 seconds, it is 4. Okay, so that's using that first scenario. All right, and then the part B says, what is the total distance that the particle travels on the interval from time equals 0 to 7? Nice thing is I know from 0 to 7, my velocity is always going to be positive here. So it's 0, it's 6, and then it's squared. So quadratic, I'm going to continue to be going in the positive direction, so all I have to do is take the any derivative. Let's do that, and we said we already did that. t cubed plus 6t, and I'm going to evaluate this from 0 to 7. So this is going to be equal to, and it's the values of the upper limit, substitute in, minus the values of the lower limit, 
now. Let's simplify. And once we start going here, so I get those values, and then 343 plus 42 is 385. So that is the total distance that this particle travels over the interval from 0 to 7. All right, that's going to be it for part 1. Um, let's take a look at part 2, and we'll start with problem number 2.